Today we're going to be upgrading my Mambo to the new version 2 gimbals from TBS. In this video I'm going to walk you through the process of actually installing the new gimbals, show you what the difference is between the new and the old ones, and then at the end share with you my thoughts. Now just to be clear, I ordered these gimbals myself, this video has not been sponsored or paid for by TBS, and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it, let's take a look at what these are all about, explain the differences and then get them in the radio. Okay, so here we've got my much-loved Mambo. I'll be honest, this is probably my favourite radio, and it isn't because of its features, it's mostly because of its shape and size. The Mambo is the perfect balance for me with regards to size, which means it can have a good size battery but not be too large, weight, it's not too heavy, and just overall feel in the hands. The screen size is perfect, it's got the right amount of switches, and overall it does a great job. It's just limited in a few other ways that frustrate me with the likes of Express LRS. I don't use Tracer, do use it with Crossfire, but still it's overall my favourite handset. Now, when this released, it came with the standard gimbals. TBS did make the Pro version as well with the folding sticks, but they've now released a new version 2 of those gimbals. We have the version 2 of the standard gimbal I've got here, and the version 2 of the Pro, which I ordered as well. Now, this new updated gimbal is still made of plastic, however, it now contains more metal parts, so they've put metal where they think it will improve things, rather than making a full gimbal out of CNC, they're still using plastic where there's a good reason to use plastic, but they've now added metal in the areas that will help with the way the gimbal feels. They've improved the tolerances in the gimbal, and it's just been overall improved in little ways, which should mean they have a better feel overall. Now, what we're going to do today is install the Pro version of these gimbals in my Mambo and give you an idea of if I personally feel there's much of a difference. What we'll do first of all though is take a closer look at them just to see what the difference is between these and then we'll compare it quickly to the original gimbal and then I'll get them installed and walk you through my personal feeling on if the upgrade was worth it. Okay, so we'll just take a quick look at the gimbals first of all. So this is the standard one. So if we open this up and get it unwrapped from the packaging. We have the standard upgraded V2 in the bottom of the box. You get the spring and Allen key and some screws. We'll need them for installation. This is the Vision 2, which has that new metal arm. You can actually see that there. You can see the top of the metal arm in that area down there. And they've just said there's little improvements everywhere really in the gimbal. Better reliability with temperature changes, polished harder metal material in places so that's that arm where you're feeling it rock there and there you've got the bearings obviously in each side there and there and they've just said minor design improvements to reduce manufacturing tolerances now the feel out the box is very nice i've always said the mambo gimbals do feel good they do feel solid they never had a lot of flex to them but this does feel pretty good. It's got a nice bounce back in the center there. And overall, everything looks pretty decent. Now, if we open up the second box in this one here, you get the same stuff in the bottom, so the same fixings. But this one is the Pro gimbal. Now, the Pro has a little bit of a party piece, and that is that the stick can fold. And it has this clever mechanism where you pull the stick up, so let me just give it a bit of a tug because I haven't opened this one up yet. There we go. You can pull the stick up and you can now fold it flat, which means when you're carrying the radio, rather than have the gimbals stick out, they now fold flat nicely, meaning that you're less likely to damage them. Now, as a result of this, there is a change to the stick end on the gimbal. This one is the black one. Similar design overall to the silver one, but there is a little bit of a difference when you look at it. Feeling it, again, the gimbal feels nice. The overall changes between these two gimbals is only the folding stick, so they're both V2s, it's just this V2 Pro just has that folding mechanism. Just feeling there, there's no real rock in that mechanism at all, there's no slop in it. When you lift it up, you can fold it nice and easily. But then when you lift it and pop it back down, yeah, that feels good. There's, there's no slop in that shaft at all. Absolutely bang on. So 
The next thing we need to do is get the radio torn down, get one of those gimbals out to compare to these two, and then we'll get the pro ones installed and then we'll share the thoughts. Okay, so tearing the mambo down, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is get my batteries out because we don't want them left in while we're taking the radio apart. They do sit quite tight in this radio, not the easiest of jobs. It never actually has been getting them out. Pop them to the side and then what we're gonna to need to do, take my little piece of foam out which holds the uh, module bay a little bit tighter in the back. Now, if I remember, there's hex screws that hold this radio together. There it is. So I'm going to use my trusty screwdriver, which is my Tarot quick changing one. This one was sent to me by Ben at 3DXR. It's absolutely fantastic, this screwdriver is. We've got the big plastic screws there. What I do know with this radio is we're going to have to remove the PCB off the top of my head to get to the gimbals. It's not a five minute task as I remember it is quite a challenge to do it on this one I can't recall if there's anything under these no there doesn't look to be so we'll just pop that back on I don't think is that that ah, there we go so it's just the four we can then lift the shell off no wires on the back nicely done TBS it's been a while since I stripped this radio down if I'm honest um Okay, so we can see the gimbals are under this main PCB here. So what we're going to need to do is remove the screws. So you can see that we've got front, 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 ones attached to the gimbal. So labeled there. So what we'll do first of all is remove the ones that are labeled front. Right, I think that's all of the ones labelled front. We're then just going to pull that little connector out because I have a feeling that gets in the way. We're then going to need to remove the nuts off these top switches because they're part of the main PCB. So we're going to need to remove the four of them. Okay, so got the nuts off. Now I keep meaning to get a tool for doing that, actually. I really do need to order one. There we go. That side seems to have released, as does that side. We've now got to be careful of the ribbon cable that's located down here at the bottom. So what we're going to do is gently flip that over, flip the lever on the back, and then pop him off. Then undo the backlight cable, which is attached to it as well, so we don't want to break that. There we go, so we can now release that. And then that leaves the inside of the radio, the main PCB, with our gimbals pre-attached. Now, these, again on this side, have screws that hold them in place. So we can see that they're labelled up. You've got gimbal, 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 gimbal. So four screws, gimbal, 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 gimbal. So to remove them from the board should be fairly straightforward. We simply should need to just undo the four of these. So if I just flip that back over, we've got the throttle, lift that off. You can then see it's very similar. You've just got the magnet in the middle and then that hall sensor located down there rather than have the sensor in the gimbal. What I'm going to do now is just get both of these off and then we'll compare these to the other ones. Take a closer look at that, get the new ones installed and then I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so we have the V1 gimbal. I've taken out the Mambo on the left and the new V2 on the right. Now, if we just look down and in, you can see that the lever on this one that's just down in that slot there is plastic. But as I said earlier, on the V2, it's metal. If we just spin it over, overall, everything looks very similar, but I can see some little changes. So they've changed the way they have the uh, thing on there. You can see it's little lines where it's like little squares on that one for the uh, ratchet mechanism. And... What I'll say is, just looking around, all of the plastics just look slightly better finished. Probably all as a result of the improved tolerances. Everything doesn't look quite as rough, and I don't mean it was particularly rough before, but everything just looks a little bit smoother. The plastics look a little bit tidier, and that's obviously where they've improved the tolerances in the gimbal itself. No massive differences to look at other than that metal lever, but just little changes here and there that 
do improve how the gimbal feels. Now, alongside the V2 gimbals, I also ordered TBS's Gimbal Sensation and Intimacy. Now, this is TBS's lubrication for getting the best possible feel from your gimbals. We have the Sensation lubricating oil in the white bottle. This has a nice screw removable top. See that it's white in colour from the looks of it. Let me just get in there and just try to peel the lid a little so we can lift it back. There we go. That looks a sort of a white lubricating oil. TBSA made for the adventurous and thrill seeking pilot. Simply apply the sensation lube in places where friction occurs and the gimbal will have that silky smooth sensation on every stroke. So we'll be putting that on there and then in the black bottle we've got intimacy damping oil. Imagine flying down with a throttle stick that doesn't go up and down at will and it's basically going to add some restriction to the movement rather than it just be free running. And again you're going to put that on your throttle ratchet or the throttle lever area just to allow it to have a bit more viscosity and have that nice smooth feel to it as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the grease that they've included on these gimbals from the factory. From the looks of it, they've just put like a generic grease on there. I don't believe they've put any of their nice posh stuff. The colour of the grease that's on there looks very generic. Looks like a, just a typical grease. So I'm just going to remove that off the two lever areas. I'm just using a cotton wool bud to get in there to do that. Not the easiest places to get into. There we go, looking good. So what we're going to do is on the friction areas, so it's the areas where the pins touch. So I'm going to put a dab on each side there, flip it up, lower it underneath and just put a coating on the area where the pin touches. And again, just making sure we don't want too much, but we don't want them to dry out. It's not an area where the gimbal grease should vanish, that's for sure. We shouldn't see it disappear, but you also just want to make sure that you're not spreading it every every way. But we have got some there to avoid any form of friction over time, and it's just going to help. with how they feel and for the intimacy we're going to put this on here where we have our throttle slider we're not going to be using a ratchet on this i'm just going to use a full cotton wool bud what i'm going to do is just coat that with a light coating up and down there and then what i'm going to do is the same on the lever side so i'm just going to put that on there now there we go and then get this mounted and then that should give us a fantastic feel on the throttle now mounted and then we've then just got this which is our feel for our throttle and then what we're going to want to do is get this which is our tensioner this is what's going to provide the tension for the throttle there we go that's now tightened in and we can see that it's completely loose. Okay, so the upgrade is done. Now, just to share with you some thoughts on the installation. Overall, it's fairly straightforward. However, just be careful once you put the case together that you don't find your gimbal is binding slightly because mine was. I ended up having to take it apart again and loosen some of the screws around it because I'd tightened them down too much and it was pulling on the gimbal slightly. It is something to be aware of. You probably wouldn't get that with CNC gimbals, but they are still plastic. But once I undid all of that, everything now feels fine. Now, as for what do I think about the V2 gimbal upgrade? Well, I have to say these feel very, very nice. They're very, very smooth. There's really very little movement in them in the corners, very little flex, and I think it's good. However, I am not going to sit here and tell you the upgrade to the V2 is worth it because it isn't. The cost of the V2 standard gimbals on their own is $15 each, which means it's a $30 upgrade. I don't think that's worth doing. And in fact, 
TBS, I don't think, are selling them to suggest it is an upgrade. They have made them available because people have asked for it. What I would say though is if you're looking to upgrade to having the Pro gimbals, then getting the V2s is just a win-win. What I can't tell you though is how much of how nice these new gimbals feel is down to their excellent lube because it could simply be that it's just improved the feel overall. They're newer gimbals, they're not worn like my older gimbals were and as a result of that they're always going to feel nicer, smoother and tighter. Really the V2 gimbal is designed to just be a production improvement moving forward with some improvements in feel. It isn't though necessarily worth a $30 upgrade, but TBS can't give them away. They're going to have to sell them to you at whatever they cost to manufacture, and that's why they're available on their website due to the demand of people wanting to buy them. But my advice would be, if you're going to do it, go for the pros. You're getting that folding gimbal, so you can pop that up and fold the sticks down. That way you're at least adding some additional protection to your radio at the same time as getting the new gimbals. That's it. Not bad, just not particularly amazing, but I never expected it to be. If you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comments section. If you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, because I bought these gimbals with the money from the channel, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content like this. I would not be able to buy products such as these gimbals to be able to make the content and share with you my thoughts without their support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.